Comrade Stalin had a specific sense of humor, specific but very witty. Sometimes he voiced his decisions and conclusions with humor, but those to whom he said this were far from laughing. I present you some witty jokes of Joseph Stalin, which influenced the history of the whole country. Admiral Isakov from 1938 was the deputy commissar of the Navy. One day in 1946, Stalin called him and said that there was an opinion to make him the chief of the main naval staff, which was renamed the General Staff of the Navy that year. Isakov replied, Comrade Stalin, I must report you that I have a serious flaw. My one leg has been amputated. Is this the only flaw you think it's necessary to report? Yes, the admiral said. We used to have a chief of staff without a head. But he worked. You just don't have a leg. It's not scary, Stalin concluded. When developing the victory car, it was planned that the name of the car would be Motherland. After learning about this, Stalin ironically asked, Well, and how much we will sell our Motherland for? The name of the car was immediately changed. From the memories of one of Stalin's guards, Ribbon. On his travels, Stalin was often accompanied by a security guard named Tukov. He sat in the front seat next to the driver and was in the habit of falling asleep on the way. One of the members of the political administration who was riding with Stalin in the back seat remarked, Comrade Stalin, I do not understand which of you is guarding whom. Look, Stalin replied, he also once put his pistol in my raincoat and told me to have it just in case. Once, Stalin was informed that Marshal Rokossovsky had a mistress, and this was the famous beautiful actress Valentina Serova. And they say, What are we going to do with them now, Tavarish Stalin? Stalin took his smoking pipe out of his mouth, thought for a moment, and said, What we will do, what we will do, we will get jealous. Once, Stalin walked with the first secretary of the Central Committee of Georgia along the alleys of the Kuntseva Dacha and treated him to lemons that he had grown himself on his lemon trees. Try it. They grew here, near Moscow. And so happened several times between the conversation on other topics. Try it. Lemons are good. Finally, he understood what Stalin was trying to tell. Comrade Stalin, I promise you that in several years Georgia will provide the country with lemons and we will not import them from abroad. Thanks God, you understood, said Stalin. The designer of artillery system, Grabin, told how on the eve of 1942 he was invited by Stalin and said, Your gun saved Russia. What do you want? A hero of socialist labor or a Stalin reward? I don't care, comrade Stalin. Grabin got both prices. During the war, the troops under Bagramian's command were the first to reach the Baltic Sea. To present this event with more pathos, the Armenian general personally poured water from the Baltic Sea into a bottle and dotted his adjutant to fly with this bottle to Moscow and present it to Stalin. He flew. But while he was flying, the Germans counterattacked and drove Bagramian away from the Baltic coast. By the time the adjutant arrived in Moscow, they were already aware of this. 
but the adjutant himself didn't know, as there was no radio on the plane. And now the proud adjutant enters Stalin's office and pretentiously proclaims, Comrade Stalin, General Bagramian sends you the water from the Baltic. Stalin takes the bottle, turns it in his hands for a few seconds, then gives it back to the adjutant and says, Give it back to Bagramian. Tell him to pour it out where he took it. Various people who happened to watch movies with Stalin told me many episodes on this topic. Here is one of them. In 1947, they watched The Train Goes East. The feel was not so good. The train goes, then stops. What station is it? Stalin asks. Dimyanovka, comrade Stalin, followed the answer. This is where I will get off, Stalin said and left the hall. A candidate for the position of Minister of Coal Industry was discussed. They suggested the director of one of the mines, Zasyatka. Someone said, it's all right, but he drinks too much. Invite him to me, Stalin said. Zasyatka came. Stalin began to talk to him and offered him a drink. With pleasure, said Zasyatka. Pour the glass of vodka. To your health, comrade Stalin. He drank and continued the conversation. Stalin sipped a little and watched carefully. Offered a second. Zasyatka drank the second glass. Stalin offered a third. But his companion pushed his glass aside and said, Zasyatka knows his measure. At a meeting of the political administration, when the question of the minister's candidacy was again raised, and the love of alcohol by the proposed candidate was again announced, Stalin, walking around with his pipe, said, Zasyatka knows his measure. Before the war, General Rokossovsky was arrested. In the autumn of 1941, he was released and given a division. During the war, the division fought so well that Stalin decided to give Rokossovsky a larger assignment. Rokossovsky was recalled from the front. Are you well acquainted with German military doctrine? Stalin asked him. No, comrade Stalin. And with the structure and armament of the German army? No, comrade Stalin, because I was sitting in the prison. You found a bad time to be in a prison. Rokossovsky became one of Stalin's favorite generals. Rokossovsky was a great man, a great war hero. He was a favorite general of Stalin. Immediately after the war, Rokossovsky built himself a huge house, everyone envied him, and he invited the entire country administration and general staff for the celebration. Stalin also arrived. We spent the whole night walking, singing songs, remembering the war. In the morning everyone says goodbye, and Stalin, in the presence of Beria, says to him, Many thanks to you, Comrade Rakasovsky. You have built a very good children's holiday home. A very good one. A few days later, the house was transferred to the social department. Rakasovsky himself remembered for a long time later on this occasion among his colleagues and built a new one, much smaller house. Once, during a discussion of grain deliveries in the early 30s, the secretary of one of the regions made a joke, saying that his region could not supply more grain. As the French people say, that even the most beautiful woman cannot give more than she has, Stalin corrected, but she can give twice. <laughs>